Good evening, this is Bell Geode, and we are back with some more Aerofly FS2. And tonight, I wanted to show off the default Cessna with the Cold and Dark Start Mod. Now, the Cold and Dark Start Mod was made by one of the employees of IPAX. Um, I believe it is a developer, but I don't know if they're, like, officially on the developer team. I'll have to check the forums again just to find out. But suffice to say, what this thing does is it uh, enables things like the ignition and so on and so forth. Fuel is not 100% enabled. However, you'll notice that our little mixture lever is all the way in the off position, which means that we can actually use it to help us with the startup. And we are here at Teterboro Airport in New Jersey. So tonight we are going to be flying around the New York City area and we're going to be landing at LaGuardia. So I have a setup to take off here from uh, runway 6 and we're going to fly around Manhattan. Uh, we'll take the Hudson and then we'll go past the Statue of Liberty. We'll turn around and then we'll come back in. And we'll take it from there and probably land on runway four. So this should be awesome. But let me show you how this uh, cold and dark start mod works. And then I'm going to change things up a bit here. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to get our battery and alternator and everything on. Both of those are linked. So you'll notice that some of the things popped up are fuel in particular. There we go. I'm going to set the clock to while I'm at it. All right, so there it is. It is 5.04 p.m. Eastern Time. You can see we've got some caution and warning lights up there. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, so now that I have that up and running, let's get our nav lights on. And let's also get our beacon lights on since we're going to start up soon. We'll also turn on the fuel pump. Fuel pump is not 100% modeled. The switch works. However, you, you're not hearing the fuel pump sound that we normally would hear. And I'm also going to turn on our avionics, too. Okay, so avionics are on. We've got the little uh, fake GPS on this side here, which at least will show you our flight plan. I'm still hoping that they will put this in stuff like the Hornet and the Eagle, which has the capability to utilize it. It's just not implemented as of yet. All right, so I think we are just about ready for startup, so we'll push in our mixture knob fully, and then we'll hit the key. Now, one of the things that you'll notice as we start it up here, um, the starting sound is not there. They don't have that just yet here in Airfly FS2. But suffice to say, we are started, we're doing pretty good, and I'm actually going to increase our throttle a little bit so that way we can idle at the proper RPM so that the engine can warm up. Okay, so now that I've got that out of the way, I am actually going to sit in this seat for the flight, and I'll explain to you why in a second. All right, so we are in the passenger seat, so I'm going to go ahead and close my door here. Actually, that is the window. All right, there we go. And the reason why I have chosen to sit on this side is because I would like to introduce you to Pamela. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Pamela. Pamela comes standard with the Cessna 172. So yeah, let me just explain how they have her set up here. Even though she's not fully animated, unfortunately, so she won't be talking to me, you know, the way that Allie would if uh, Allie were here with us, she does do certain things. For example, let's do a controls wipeout really quick. So we'll do left aileron, we'll do right aileron, left and right, pull the elevator up, elevator down, up and down, and then, of course, the rudder, if you look at her legs, is that not the coolest thing? So even though she doesn't have, like, an AI to her just yet, I gotta say, they did really, really well on her modeling and her ability to do animations. She'll even work the throttle for you. 
So there we go. That is perfect. All right, so Pam and I are going to do a quick tour of New York City for you. And I will do most of the talking because, as you can see, she's pretty much the silent type. She just likes to fly, which I'm okay with that. Pam, you can be in the driver's seat. We're going to head to New York City. Okay, so we need to get to runway 6, which I believe the threshold for that is on the opposite side. So we're going to head out here and turn to the left. All right, let me get our parking brakes off in a second here. I should probably put on our taxi lights while I'm at it. So excuse me, Pam, I'm going to like get into your personal bubble here. I hope you don't mind. All right, taxi lights are on. Fuel pump, I'll go ahead and turn you off. Pedo heat will turn you on. Actually, I don't think that is the pedo heat. There it is. Okay, that is actually the strobe light. So we'll activate that a little bit later. I could have Pam do it, but unfortunately, her hands are busy right now, so she can't. So I'll have to do all of that legwork for us. Okay, parking brake off, and let's go ahead and head out. I don't think we're going to need flaps today either, so I'm going to forego that. And let's see if we can turn it all the way around. We've got a lot of Learjets here at Teterboro, so... This is going to be interesting navigating through all of them. But I do see a little bit of an open spot right here, so I might just take it. Or actually, considering those are multi-million dollar Learjets, I'm thinking we should probably go this way. We'll swing past that one there, and then we'll head out left to the asphalt taxiway. And that should be able to get us to our runway. Now, as usual, I can see the helmet mounted display. You, of course, cannot because I don't have it set up that way so I can show it to you. But you know it's there and you know that I'm using it as uh, my flying aid, so to speak. I kind of like it because if I were in a fighter jet, then especially a modern one, I would be seeing something like this. So it's kind of cool to have. I know it's not that realistic to have something like that on in a Cessna, but I find that it helps me whenever I record these videos because I do tend to ramble on and at a glance I can pay attention to what's going on instead of having to do this and get all up in Pam's personal bubble. We don't want that, right Pam? Yeah, we don't want that. Okay, so we are going to continue taxiing down to the end. We'll turn around and then we'll take off. We'll check everything out, make sure that everything is looking kosher. And one thing I should mention as far as this cold and dark start mod, uh, since it doesn't implement everything, some features do not work the way that they would in the real aircraft or even in a different sim, such as maybe X-Plane or FSX. But we can forgive that for now because this is a huge step in the right direction that I hope will be implemented on all of the aircraft that are currently in Aerofly FS2. This is kind of like a proof in concept, uh, just basically to prove that it can be done. And since we know that it now can be done, I'm hoping that the devs will take the ball and run with it. But unfortunately, I do not know what is currently on their timeline as far as things that they're working on. So I can't really say for sure that something like this will come to all of the aircraft. But put it on my wish list. This is something that I would definitely like to see for some of the others. In particular, the Corsair. I love starting that old bird up. Okay, this is going to be our exit here. Or I guess technically it's our entry to the runway. Brakes are still a little bit squirrely, but I have a couple of ideas that I might try in order to see if I can fix that. But for now, we're just going to hit the parking brakes and it's going to allow us to bounce a little bit. Okay. All right. So now that we're here, Pam, if you don't mind, let me see if I can get the rest of lights on. So don't mind me. I'll try not to be a perv here. Okay. Strobe, we want you on. Landing lights, we want you on. Fuel pump, we're going to turn you back on. And beacon, I believe this is. Yes, that is our beacon. We'll go ahead and turn you back off. Actually, no, that is a taxi light. Why did I turn that off? I don't know. But I think the beacon is here on the end, so we'll turn that off. Okay. So you can see our flight plan there. We're going to be traveling a little bit to the north, and then we're going to head over the Hudson River. 
once we're over the head the Hudson we're gonna follow it all the way past Manhattan past the Statue of Liberty and then we'll turn around and come into LaGuardia seems pretty straightforward right all right let's get going parking brake off and taxi us to the active please Pam Pam is very good at what she does here she really doesn't need my help you could probably fly the plane all by herself, right, Pam? Pam's like, dude, will you shut up for just one minute so that I can fly here? Oh my god, you talk so much. Alright, here we go. We're pretty much lined up, so we'll put the parking brakes on. Before I take off, I want to set us the runway heading. So once again, I'm just all over you apparently. Hmm. Don't tell Allie, by the way. Please don't tell Allie. I don't want to die tonight. All right, let's set ourselves up on runway heading right about there. So that way I can utilize the autopilot once we take off. And I'm thinking we should probably take it up to about 2,000, maybe 2,500 feet. We'll see how uh, that works here. Okay, but I say that we are just about set to go, so you know what it's time for, folks. Brakes down, throttles up. Parking brake off. And let's rock and roll, baby. True to life, this thing does pull to the left. If you were ever in a Cessna in real life, be prepared for that. It does pull to the left. We're at 70 knots, so we'll go ahead and get off the ground. Positive rate, we've got fixed gear, so there will not be any gear up. Now, you may notice I still have the windows up. There is a reason for that. One of the things that is modeled with this particular aircraft is the fact that when you have the windows open your airspeed drops so you cannot actually get the full airspeed until you close the windows kind of makes sense right you've got air rushing in it's not as aerodynamic so on and so forth but now that we're airborne let's go ahead and get our autopilot on and that will hold our pitch currently we're going to get our heading on Okay, so that will keep us where we need to be. And as soon as we get up to altitude, we'll go ahead and turn that off. So let me pull this down to about 2,500. We'll arm that. We'll set the vertical speed. Currently set to 600. We'll set it to about 500. I think that should be fine. Okay, so once we reach 2,500, we should be good to go. Alright, so now that I've done that, let's go ahead and close our window. So we've got that side closed. And we've got this side closed. So all of a sudden, our speed is going to go up considerably. And I'm going to give us full throttle here. Okay, since we're airborne, we'll also kill the landing lights. Alright, let's go outside and take a look, see at how we look. we are looking good okay according to our little map here we're a little bit to the right of where we should be so I'm gonna swing us out to the left we are under heading hold influence so all I have to do is use the button that I've got on my joystick assigned to that and that'll put us in the right direction here we do have a little bit of wind not much but it is a headwind right now, so once we make our right and start going over the Hudson, all of that should change. And you can already start to see the scenery down below. It looks pretty good. However, one of the things that I have noticed with New York is it does have a tendency of placing trees 
everywhere. And I know that uh, IPAX has started doing that cultivation thing that they've been talking about and touting for like the last uh, month or two. However, I don't think it's perfect just yet. Like I shouldn't be seeing trees in the middle of ball fields. Hopefully that'll be something that gets fixed uh, relatively soon. Okay, I do have the capability of zooming this in, so we will do just that. And it looks like we need to head out to the right. So let me see. I'm thinking we'll start out at 125. We'll just head straight for the Hudson here. I feel a lot safer in this thing than in an Airbus. That's all I will say about that. Okay, we're just over 2,100 feet, so I have a set for 2,500. I'm going to pull us a little bit more to the right here. We set it for about heading 140. As always, the water is not actual water that we're used to seeing in Sims. It's basically just an ortho photo of the water. So that means any ships, any barges or anything that we see along the Hudson River. Well, it's not a 3D model. It's just a picture that happened to be there at the time that this picture was taken. Still not a huge fan of that. And I'm not sure how IPAX plans on addressing that. But I do hope that that is something that they will address as this sim starts to mature. Okay, so there is the edge of Joyzy, and you can start to see Manhattan there, so we're going to make our right over the river. Set us up on a heading of about 230-ish. Now if I were in a Hornet, I would probably be going underneath that bridge, but since uh, Pam is in the driver's seat here, We'll let her determine where we're going to go, and I don't think she wants to go underneath that bridge. Just have a sneaking suspicion that is not on her game plan for today. Alright, but there you go. Now in the past, I have mentioned the fact that I'm not 100% sold on how IPAX has implemented buildings. This changes things. When you take a look at how they've done New York City, this really does feel, at least in the Oculus Rift, like you're flying around New York City. Especially the fact that I lowered the visibility a little bit so you can see that haze. That's something that would actually be there on an average day in New York City. So this looks perfect. All the buildings look like they're hand placed. And they look like they have exactly the kind of texturing that they should have. It's just impressive. It's downright impressive. You can start to see Central Park down there. And please bear in mind, folks, I've never actually been to New York City proper. I've been to JFK Airport. That's about it. But everything that I know about New York, whether from flight sims or from what I've read or seen over the years, this looks and feels like what New York should look and feel like. As a matter of fact, let's take another look from outside. So yeah, you can really see all of the iconic structures that exist in Manhattan. 
So from here you can see the Empire State Building, off in that direction is the Chrysler Building. You see the World Trade Center up ahead. I'm sure one of these is probably Trump Tower, <clears throat> which actually in real life, there is no way in hell we could fly around this area right now. We would be taken out with the quickness. But since this is a flight sim, we can get away with it. But yeah, look at Central Park right down to the lake. Excuse me, Pam, let me look behind you here. Right down to the little lake there, and of course the library, I think it is, that's over in that direction. That's all well modeled. This is what you're paying for when you pay uh, $14.99 for this particular DLC. However, as beautiful as this is, I gotta take points off for the rest of the area that we've been given, because it really doesn't match up to the beauty that is New York City. So it's great if you're gonna be flying around the city, but if you're planning on going up Long Island, some of the other uh, areas in Long Island don't look all that great. But I'm sure that will change over time. There's a world famous Empire State Building. Doesn't look like they have any giant gorillas on there today, so this is good. This is really good. And we'll take another look outside. Another really cool thing to mention, if you look just in front of the World Trade Center, you'll actually see the World Trade Center monuments that were built to honor the uh, people who died on that fateful day on September 11th, 2001. Right about now, we should be flying over a lady that needs no introduction. So I'm actually gonna take off the autopilot right now and we'll see if we can actually find her. All right, autopilot is off. I'm gonna swing out to the Jersey side here. According to our flight plan, we should be doing that anyway, but I really wanna take a look at this gorgeous lady. She is the best. All right, Pam, I got the plane here, so I'm gonna swing this around real quick over in New Jersey. Newark Airport is over in that direction. Won't be landing there today. There's the uh, Verrazano Bridge, or Verrazano Nav Narrows Bridge, if you prefer. And let's see if we can see her. I know she's around here somewhere. There she is. That's the lady I've been looking for. All right, well, let's go say hello to her. I don't care who you are, folks, that is, in my opinion, the most beautiful lady in America right there. 
Okay, let's see if we can get ourselves back on course here. So LaGuardia is off in that direction. And in order for us to make this approach, we're going to need to swing out to the right. Since we're in a Cessna, I opted for a very short flight today. I really didn't want to be airborne for too long. But we are going to need to start coming down. And come to think of it, I have a brilliant idea that I want to try here. I know I've done this before in X-Plane. I don't think I've done it in FSX. However, if you are familiar with what they call the Expressway Visual Approach, I want to try that. I think the winds might be favorable for it, so we'll see if we can actually pull it off. And I will use the little fake GPS here that has us uh, lined up to come in on runway four. The basic premise behind the expressway visual is this. You come in like you're coming into runway four. So I'm going to go ahead and line us up to runway four right now as we uh, lower our altitude. As a matter of fact, let me trim us up a little bit here, Pam. Okay, there we go. That way we can lose some speed as well while I'm coming around this turn. Okay, so as soon as that uh, flight plan line is vertical there, we should be on a direct course for runway 4 at LaGuardia. As a matter of fact, there it is, up ahead. And we can also take a quick look at Manhattan while we're at it. There's the Empire State Building again. So beautiful, especially this time of the day. All right, so the plan of attack is we are looking for the expressway that's going to cut across from left to right. We are going to be following that expressway as it loops its way around. And once it loops its way towards the shoreline, we're going to be coming off the expressway, so to speak, and we're going to land on runway 31, runway 31. That is the expressway visual. It's a very popular approach that uh, pilots will use if the winds have changed and they favor the more northbound runway as opposed to the more eastbound runway, which is the one that we're facing right now. You can see it directly ahead. So if you look down there, you should see the expressway that heads off to the right. So that is our target. That is where we are headed. So we're gonna come off the approach here and we're gonna swing out to the right. The other integral part about the expressway visual is we need to be at certain altitudes by the time we make it to certain points around the area. So we should be about a thousand feet by the time we get over those buildings here. And we're getting close to that now. We're actually at a little over 1100. But also, I need to worry about our speed and our flap settings. So I'm going to level us out once we hit 1000 and then we'll start coming in. So you can see LaGuardia over there, and that's the runway we would have come in on. We're going to be coming in on a crosswind runway, essentially. All right, Pam, what are we looking like for flaps here? Are we good? I think we're good. I'm going to drop flaps one. And we're just shy of 1,000. Okay, this should be fine. I love how they've made Brooklyn, the Bronx, all of those areas look. It's pretty cool very cool and especially with the evening lighting lighting as it is in the oculus rift right now this feels like i'm flying here in real life so this is cool this is very cool i'm gonna drop the flaps uh one more notch so flaps two and that should be good to get us in 
So this area that we're passing here that has the uh, baseball diamond is where the World's Fair used to be back in the 60s. And this is also one of our visual landmarks that we're looking for to come in on the expressway visual to runway 31. So Manhattan is back that way. And the other boroughs of New York are all around us. Okay, there's the lake and this is the split in the highway. So we are going to want to take a left here. This is our exit. There's the stadium. We're going to need to be down to about 500 feet by the time we go around this curve here. Right now we are at about 750. All right, so I'll swing us around some more here, Pam. But yeah, this area of New York is absolutely beautiful how they put that together. And I say beautiful using that term loosely because I'm not a huge fan of cities. However, I kind of like how this looks because of the fact that it looks so iconic, if you will. Alright, we're going to need to drop a little bit more altitude and speed here. You'll see where the road splits off. That is where we need to be. You'll notice that we're currently on glide slope for runway 31. So we're going to keep bringing her down. And right when the road splits is when we need to make our left to come in at that runway. There's another baseball diamond there. I don't know if that's actually supposed to be the other one or if they're two separate ones. I don't know much about uh, baseball, so really couldn't tell you. I do, however, know this is our turn to final. So let's go ahead and get her done. Alrighty, Pam, drop our throttle a little bit more, please. And we'll bring her home. Look at that, perfectly on glide slope. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? Although, all things considered, with the winds favoring the other runway that we were supposed to come in on, it might get a little bit bumpy for us coming down. But I'm sure we can compensate for that. That's interesting. That looks to be an aircraft that was caught in the ortho photo that they used for LaGuardia. Nice. Somebody needs to Photoshop that out. Okay, folks, welcome to New York's LaGuardia Airport. All right, let's see if I can bring her in nice and smooth here. probably gonna bounce. They have a tendency of doing that in this sim. Yep, told you. Needless to say, that is not like real life. However, it is what it is. At least we're down. Okay, so let's take a quick look at LaGuardia here. Everything looks awesome. All right, this is our turn off, and I do realize that I never did put the landing lights back on. Too busy sightseeing, apparently. Let's get our flaps up, and I'm going to put our taxi lights on. There we go. So what do we have here? It looks like uh, Air Canada and Northwest. That's interesting. I don't think Northwest flies anymore. I wonder why they have Northwest at this airport. If anything, it should be American and Delta. They seem to have taken over this airport. Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. But hey, it looks really good, though. I'll give them props for that. They did an excellent rendition of LaGuardia. Or as they say in that neck of the woods, LaGuardia. Gotta talk like a New Yorker when you're making a video about New York, you know. But yeah, really not impressed with the uh, NWAs there because I really do not think they are flying anymore. So that needs to be changed, IPAX. Need to change those to American and Delta. In particular, American, because I know this is one of their hubs. And especially since they took over US Air, who had this airport as one of their focus cities. Yeah, that's something that's going to need to be changed. All right, where do we park? I'm thinking on the other side next to that Learjet that you might notice in the lens flare there. 
So let's go ahead and cross runway four, which is the runway that we would have been landing on had we stuck to the flight plan there. And there you can see the beautiful New York skyline over there. That is outstanding. But yeah, like I said, that is what you're paying for when you pay $14.99 for this add-on. But with that having been said, I don't want to make it seem like I'm slamming IPAX for charging for something like this when they gave us, you know, Colorado, a much larger state for free. But I do also want to point out this thing that I noticed. In the navigation map, when you have the New York add-on, you will see that the high definition ortho tiles that they've used not only include New York and New Jersey, but pretty much all the neighboring states going as far south as like Virginia, probably even further south than that, and as far west as Pennsylvania and portions of Ohio. What that tells me is the $14.99 is more of an investment rather than getting a finalized product. It sounds to me like they're going to be working on Pennsylvania, which of course I will love the ever-living heck out of them if they come out with Pennsylvania. In particular, do Pittsburgh right. Like I said before, we've got 237 bridges around town. I want to see every single one of them modeled. I might even help you out if you ask me. I will uh, get some pictures and so on for you of all the various bridges around town. I will do that as my contribution to Airfly FS2. I'll be more than happy to. But yeah, that's what I'm thinking is coming and that is why I'm okay with paying $14.99 to get this. Should you pay $14.99? That's entirely up to you. If you love New York, then yeah, heck yeah, go ahead and get it. It is quite possibly one of the best New Yorks that I've ever seen. And performance-wise, this thing performs excellently. I don't even know if that's a word, but I'm going to use it. Okay, parking brake. Alright, so here we are at LaGuardia. And I sincerely hope you have all enjoyed this flight. So this has been a first look at the default Cessna with the cold and dark mod that was made by one of the employees of IPAX. So yeah, last thing we need to do, Miss Pam, is turn everything off and then we can say goodbye to the audience. And then we'll probably check in in a hotel here and hang out for a while. Please don't tell Allie. Alright, so I'm going to get our landing lights off, turn our strobe off, should have done that before. And we'll get the avionics off. Yep, so far so good. Steps in the right direction, folks. Steps in the right direction. I love it. And let's kill our engine. There we go. And finally, we'll get the alternator generator off and turn off this key. There we go. Windows open. Doors open. And we are done. So there you go, folks. Pamela? Say goodbye to the audience, and we will be back next time around. Haven't decided yet where we're going to go or what we're going to fly, but suffice to say, I will show you some more really good, interesting stuff in Airfly FS2. So thank you as always for watching. This has been Bell Geode, and I have been flying in Airfly FS2 in the default Cessna with the cold and dark start mod. The mod is, of course, free of charge. All you have to do is make sure you join the Aerofly forums and, of course, download it and follow the instructions very carefully to install it properly. All right, but if you've enjoyed this flight today and this look at the Cessna as well as the New York area, please feel free to give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And Pam and I will be back at some point in time soon. So, for now, I bid you all adieu. This is Belgiode signing out. Happy Thanksgiving and ciao!